Nous conseillons de conversation, on ne va pas quitter Gaspillon encore. Parce que je n'ai pas parlé de. Vous savez, je me suis dit que je voulais que je veux dire 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 que You're just pr producing free content for other people. Mm -hmm. So let's produce our content. Okay? Now, we're going to conversation about the young people or the generation of the grand people who have the property in the Haiti. And you said something that shocked me, you know? Because they're not bad with the Haitians. They're not bad with the little Haiti. They're like, ah, little Haiti, man. And you said, well, it's because they haven't been nowhere. They haven't been nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you've been anywhere, what's happening in Miami is nothing new. Mm -hmm. It's been happening in New York for 20 years, 30 years. Mm -hmm. It's been happening in L.A. It's been happening in Chicago. It's been happening in Washington, D.C., all these cities. It's been happening in London, if you've been around the world. So, in some parts of Haiti, too, right? Yeah. There's places in Haiti that... You know, um, nobody wanted them. Now there's beach resorts there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can't act like the same thing can't happen here in Miami. If you look at it, it's, it's a beautiful city. Who wouldn't want to live here? Yeah. People are flying from New York <laughs> through the coronavirus to mm -hmm. come here. Mm -hmm. You know? So we got If we have something, man, we have to hold on to it, man. Like, I'm having issues with the city, things I won't go into. Um, but a lot of people don't have energy to fight that. A lot of people don't have the energy to... To make a phone call, a lot of people don't have the energy to wait, wait them out. Or the, or the knowledge, or the knowledge, you know, or the, or the, or the confidence. But your home is really all you have, man. Once somebody moves you out of your home, you know, you really don't have much. You know, you have to pass. You got to pass something down to your kids. Your kids can't do nothing with your shoes, your belt, your car. I mean, that's something, but it's not really handing something, them, something down to them. You want to give them legacy, and that's that's property, that's land, you know. And even once you got the legacy, white supremacy never stopped there, mm -hmm. right? Yep. If you look at Detroit, <laughs> mm -hmm. Detroit is the highest concentration of black home, black owned properties, right? But guess what? It's the highest level of taxes, municipality taxes on the properties as well, mm -hmm. okay? And I think there's, uh, there's been a lawsuit against them because they've been, they, they've been uh, putting liens on uh, liens on people's houses, on overvalued taxes that they put on the house, uh, and people have been losing their houses like that. So even though when you own your property, the fight never stopped there. Like your uh, many a few families that we know here, uh, they your family owned the property, but it doesn't stop here, mm -hmm. right? Yep. You still have to continue the fight to secure what you have. Yep. You know, and if you're gonna fight, I mean, we gotta fight all the time. You gotta fight for, you know, uh, you go to the store. You feel like someone's charging you too much. Um, you know, you at your job. You gotta fight to make sure that they understand what value you bring to the company. Um, you gotta fight for where you live, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying you, get, you gotta fight for your home. You gotta fight for your property. Some people say, well, I'd rather rent an apartment, and that's fine. I don't, I'm not taking that away from nobody. It's, it's fine to rent, you know, and things of that nature. But and until you actually own the house. It's still not yours, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you gotta th think about: Is it worth? I would rather fight for the next 10 to 15 years now, so that I can have an easier fight later, than to take it easy now and be in the fight of my life. Yeah. When I should be relaxing. So like, if, you, if you ain't taking care of your assets right now, if you're not trying to pay nothing off and get out of debt and stuff like that, when you're older, that stuff is gonna burden you. You're not gonna have the energy to fight like you can now. So. so Leverage your, leverage your battles. Leverage your battles. Like Les Brown says, if you do what is hard, your life will be easy. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. And you see, when you say, when you go to the store, you have to fight as well. We're not talking about you go to the store and they're following you around and blah, blah, blah. No. Uh, you want to know the value of a penny? When you go and you buy something for 99 cents, okay, you give them a dollar, Ask them for your penny back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and see the teller's reaction, mm -hmm. okay? And you'll see what's the real value of a penny. Or if you need to buy something that is 99 cents and you only have 98, see if they're going to let you walk with it. Mm -hmm. 
that's when you see the value of a penny, right? So it's always a question. And when we say fight, we say we always say talking about fighting in a racial context, right? Man, as humans, you have to fight because everybody's fighting, you know, to a better position themselves. Uh, there's competition everywhere. And the, the thing that you said that Haitian uh, who they were talking about little Haiti, I'm going to say, ah, little Haiti, it's because they haven't been nowhere. See why you frequent a lot moon? Who live in other côté? Like I born in uh, uh, born and raised in Montreal. I live in Philadelphia. I live in Brooklyn. Live in Atlanta and other places. So when I'm in Little Haiti. I could see the potential of what yeah. of what it could be. Yeah. I see the real value mm -hmm. of what it is. So people that haven't been any other places, yeah. you know, I don't judge them on them, but don't try to discredit us neither. <laughs> yeah, those who have, what, what are we waiting for? You know what I mean? There's a lot of people that came back home. What are we waiting for? We got to find each other and we got to do, we, we got to put make sure that we at the table. You know what I'm okay. Gotta make sure we're at the table. You see, you've been in New York. You came back in Miami mm -hmm. because of a real estate situation. Your family have assets, etc., and you're here to help them pre to to preserve it and mm -hmm. uh, preserve it and mm -hmm. the family, right? Yeah. Okay. So, because there's there's many politics being played, for sure, and many administrative. Uh, um, the piège on on anglais? Traps. Okay. Administrative uh, administrative traps. Okay. But here's another thing. You taught me a new word today, too. Is it what? You taught me a new word today. A <laughs> piège, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's where they sell drugs, the trap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're educating each other. <laughs> um, crossing new <laughs> limits of our understanding, okay? So when we talk about uh, here in Little Haiti, uh, not realizing the value of ownership is the same thing and and we call it gentrification but when you translate and you go to Haiti they call it colonialism right or imperial uh, 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 imperialism imperial <laughs> imperialism imperialism okay imperialism okay <laughs> so here's the thing now that the the world the, the economy is changing you've come to realize the value of the land that we have back home, right? Because before you used to be able to import a high volume of a product or produce in order to bring it to the market and sell it to the smallest margin in order to make uh, a lot of money. So the cost of entry, the cost of opportunity is very high and steep. But nowadays, when it comes to the international trade, Haiti's next door. China is far away, right? And the cost, the, the labor cost is so low in China. That's what makes it so, uh, might make China so competitive versus United States when it comes to producing things, okay? But it's one thing, now, you're looking at Haiti, and they are looking at Haiti as an opportunity. An opportunity to do what? To colonize the same way they gentrified little Haiti. So if there's a lesson that we could take from little Haiti and translate it to Haiti, it's the same way that you've been to New York. You, you've been living in New York. You told me you've been living in London as well and other places, right? Visiting. Visiting other mm -hmm. places. Mm -hmm. And then you see the value of coming back to Haiti to protect your asset. It's the same way that we as Haitian Canadian, Haitian American, Haitian French, uh, French, etc. We have to not necessarily go home, but we have to pay attention of the asset that our ancestors have left for us in Haiti. Because now, right now, these assets, they're very much valuable more than they were like before that coronavirus thing, right? Because you can import uh, textile and apparel from Haiti at a cost and a, and a volume that doesn't require you to buy so many, uh, so much quantity to distribute it in this market. Right now, you might be able to pay your labor a little bit more in Haiti and pay less when it comes to transportation. 
that make us back into competitiveness. But who's going to take advantage of it? Are we Haitian American, Haitian Canadian, Haitian French, Haitian Belgium, etc., wherever we are, are we going to satisfy ourselves having a job anyway? <laughs> Whatever job is left in the market. <laughs> but it's been like, you cannot guarantee a revenue with only, with only one stream of revenue. Any millionaire has a minimum, an average of five to seven streams of revenue. To become a millionaire today so thinking that you have one stream of revenue working for somebody is going to secure your livelihood it's really lying to yourself so but I digress to come back into Haiti and the investment that have been made by our investors the same way your parents have made the investment to have this home right here this investment that they have made it's time for us to harness that investment and make sure that we protect the same way that you're protecting your, your, your elders. Mm -hmm. We protect our families over there in Haiti. We protect the memory of our ancestors, not by wearing red and blue, but by acting red and blue for the best interest, not of a nation, but of the people, right? So now that the economy is changing, we owe it to ourselves. If you want to maintain a quality of lifestyle, to go back home. When I say go back home, to invest back home and see what is there over in Haiti that you could market here in order to sustain yourself and to develop people, uh, the economy over there. What do you think about that? I think that's a great idea. I think great idea. That's step one, mindset. And, you know, we have a lot of... Um we got, we got a lot of success in Haiti, and we got a lot of a lot of challenges with Haiti. So, you know, it's a fight, though. It's not. It's, nobody says it's gonna be easy. You know, the same way you gotta but go live You know what I'm saying? To work for somebody else, <sighs> you gotta do the same thing if you want something for yourself. So, yeah. I'm not saying you go to Haiti and, and and it works out over the weekend. It may take five, ten years, but you start so planting those seeds now. And maybe you could do something tomorrow. When did you start your your brand, your school uh... school mill? Yeah. Well, this is a collaboration. Um, this this brand started uh, Super Bowl weekend. You know, my friend came down. He's printing shirts, and he came to the Super Bowl was in Miami this year, and I knew a lot of people was gonna have eyes on Miami, and I said this is a good opportunity for people to learn more about Miami than just South Beach and Wynwood. So I started promoting the, the neighborhoods that I grew up in. I grew up in uh, Liberty City, Little Haiti, Alapata, um, Sprinkle of Overtown, went to school in Hialeah. So I know Miami very well. And there's a whole culture to this city that a lot of the world don't know, but the world is always in Miami. But they only know, they only South, know, Beach. They only know South Beach. South Beach. Wynwood. The promotion of the brand was to just promote the old neighborhoods, to not forget. For those who left, they remember what Miami used to be like, you know, growing up. So. That's what it's all about. Something I started in the winter 2019. It's a soft launch. When I say soft, it's super, super soft. It's word of mouth. People see it, they like it. But we got some big things coming in the future. Lay around for a school milk, Miami collection. Well, the thing is, you started on the Super Bowl weekend, and now we are in conversation mm -hmm. trying to see if there's a possibility to have the shirt made in Haiti, right? Yep. It doesn't mean that it's going to be made over there, but at least there's a consideration. We gotta, yeah. we, gotta we gotta search. We gotta search for for all for all potential um, opportunities. And you know, a lot of times, unfortunately, with black people in the diaspora, when we look for a mortgage or we look for insurance, we don't look for people that look like us to give us the business. We look outside of our community to get the business. We, we I think we should start in and then go out because that's what they do. They start in. If they give you an opportunity, believe me, they interview five, six, seven people that didn't look like you before they got to you. And, so, and they have to force them to do mm -hmm, it, mm -hmm. you know? For us, we got to think differently. We got to, like, you know, if you deserve the opportunity, someone else that looks just like you also deserve the opportunity. Yep, yep. There, you know, there's, uh, man, there's so many data co coming through my mind as you're talking. Um, when you say uh, before they give you an opportunity, like a job, right? There's yep. a bunch of people mm -hmm. that they are considering before you get the, mm -hmm. the scrap, mm -hmm. right? Do you know that the only demography that makes equal, uh, an equal revenue and white, uh, right, uh, 
corporation is a gay black man, mm. the, the white woman don't make as much. The black man, the heterosexual don't make as much, you know? Mm -hmm. the, the black woman don't make as much, right? Mm -hmm. But the gay black man is on average the same level of salary as the white man. So it's the white man and then the second demography is the gay black man, okay? So that's one thing. And, the, and which is good because when you look at about when you take about uh, homosexuality, they're part of the minority, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. When you talk about uh, um, being uh, a woman, woman is part of the demography of the minority, etc. So when you are fighting to have your right on the marketplace, right, and the work field, and you say yes, you're fighting for minorities. You have to know by the identity uh, that you're you're embracing which minority are you fighting for? Are you deleting? Are you diluting your effort or you're focusing in one point? Okay, so that is the 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 market when it comes to the labor force. But if you bring it back to the uh, entrepreneurship, okay, then we talk about okay, who do you bring your money to? Because over there you have more control. Mm -hmm. Who are you paying to get a commodity or to get a service, right? So if, and, and you know what's funny? Sometimes we won't pay a Haitian or we won't pay a black person for a service, but we end up dealing with a black person to get <laughs> oh, Haitian. But it's only because that black person is, is working for the white dude. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> that's side the contract with you. So the white dude is taking the profit and the black dude is taking the salary, knowing that salary doesn't produce wealth, only profits, right? <laughs> and ownership. So the thing is, when it comes to the potential of who we are and what we have, okay, um, what we have is us, it's our potential, it's our creativity. But there's another, uh, there's another side that we cannot neglect. Yes, we are the most creative people on earth because we are the direct descendant of God, right? But here's the thing. If we don't attend to other functions that will allow us to prosper and to be freely in this world, if you don't take the time to establish and sell and, and establish your brand, mm -hmm. take the money from your salary, put that money in, you know, bet on yourself by buying the T-shirt, establishing a stock of T-shirt mm -hmm. and marketing it, invest your time doing so instead of going and have a good time with other people. If you don't take the time doing so, you don't get to be mm -hmm. the coach and to live mm -hmm. freely mm -hmm. your passion, your mm -hmm. Your talent, yeah, your purpose, you know, yeah. your purpose, ex exactly. So, what I meant to say is, attend to all the administrative part of things. Attend to the hard part of life. Okay, we're coming back to what you said. Mm -hmm. Attend to what is hard, so your life could be easy. So, what is an easy life for you, mm -hmm. and what is a hard life for you? So, mm -hmm. just imagine what what will what will be a hard life for you. And if you are having a hard life right now, it's because you took it too easy earlier. Mm. So why not take your hardship today and convert it into an easy life in the future? Yeah. It's already hard anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it Haitian. Keep it Haitian. Not conversation, sir. No. And if you want to buy your T-shirt, go to keepithaitian.net. Yep, we got the shirts. We got Alapada. We got Liberty City, Little Haiti. Over town, uh, did we drop Overlock in there? Not sure. Not not yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. O Overlock is coming soon, but you know, Little Haiti for sure. We have to represent. And if you're from those neighborhoods, don't forget the neighborhoods. They're trying to change it. They're trying to change where we're from. You know where you're from. Never forget that. Keep it Haitian. Peace.